Although all tests require full comprehension and understanding of the material, the format of a course exam should affect the way that you study for it. Two main types of tests are multiple choice tests and essay tests. Multiple choice tests. When a professor chooses to administer a multiple choice test as opposed to an essay test, there are some important things to pay specific attention to. Or lecture, such as important dates, key terms, or people. However, with this being said, you should also know the main concepts of the class as well, because a professor still often wants to make sure their students have a good general knowledge of what is important to the class. Make sure when you are studying, you make good use of your study tools in order to help you learn the material. Some of the study tools that can help you with multiple choice tests are flashcards, charts, mind maps, and detail trees. All of these tools reorganize the material in ways that make it more meaningful and memorable for you. If you are allowed to make markings on the test or a scratch sheet of paper, write down anything you think might be important before you forget it, such as formulas, dates, or mnemonics that you have used to aid memorization. Another thing that is important to do is to mark questions you're not sure of and come back to them once you have gone through the whole test. There may be some important questions later in the test that you know right off the bat, but there's a chance you may not get to them if you spend too long with the difficult ones. It is important to always fill in an answer on a multiple choice test because there's always a chance you will get it right. Unless your professor penalizes you for wrong answers, you should always mark every answer. The best method for approaching multiple choice test questions is to cover up the answers to a question and try to think about it in your head in advance. This is useful because if there are two answers that are close together and you think you know the answer in your head, you're less likely to get stuck between two possibilities. Even if you only have an idea of the answer before looking at your choices, you'll be more likely to recognize the correct answer. It is also important to read every option. If you can eliminate per incorrect answers, you can narrow down your choices. Also, you'll pick up on keywords in the questions or answers that could be slightly tricky, such as accept or not. Whenever you see all of the above, make sure you have read every possible option to look for more than one answer that could be correct. Another idea if you're stuck on a question is to try plugging in every option to make a true or false statement out of the question. Finally, be aware during the test that as you go through, there may be other questions on the test that will help you answer previous ones. Be on the lookout for this as you go through your test. If you finish the test with time to spare, make sure to go back and review your answers. Your first instinct is usually correct, so try not to second guess yourself too much. But as you go back through, you may find unintentional errors that could take points off your score. Check to be sure that you filled in the right bubbles on your Scantron and answered every question. If you have time to go through the questions again, pay extra attention to the ones you may have struggled with. If you struggle with time tests, try to calm down and not think about the ticking of the clock. Remember that if other people leave the test before you, it doesn't necessarily mean that they answered every question or will get the best test score. Although some students are simply fast test takers, others will leave early because they think they've answered everything they can. Essay tests. Essay tests require a thorough comprehension of the material and the ability to write about it in your own words. Unlike multiple choice tests, you cannot guess an answer to an essay test question. It is important to prepare for essay tests by thinking about relationships among topics and practicing writing about the material. During lecture and while reading, try to indicate in your notes when you think key points are being discussed. You should know the key concepts and be able to outline summaries of the most important ideas. Make sure you know the relationships among concepts and the supporting details, dates, and events. Use study tools and practice essays to help solidify the information in your head. It is recommended that you ask the professor for sample questions. If they are able to give you a study guide or sample essay problems, outline the answer to each question and practice writing about it. Sample questions are usually very similar or identical to the ones that you will see on the test. Find out how many questions will be on the test and how much time it will be given so that you can create practice tests using the same time constraint. As soon as you get to the test, you should write down key points that you think you may later forget. This will clear up your mind to be thinking more about how to write and examine and analyze your essay as opposed to trying to remember important details. In your essay, make sure to address and answer all parts of the question. If the question includes action words such as define, contrast, or summarize, make sure you do all of these things. Reread the question often to be sure that you are covering every topic included. 
Try making a list of all the things you need to address in your essay, checking them off as you go. It is highly recommended that you write a brief outline before you begin your essay. This outline should include your main ideas and supporting points so that your thoughts are organized and come across clearly to the professor. You may get partial credit for parts of your outline if you run out of time while writing the actual essay. During the test, it is important to spend your time wisely, as many people in this testing format either run out of time or end with barely any time to spare. Try not to spend too much time delivering about the question without writing anything down. Start with your general outline and move right to the essay itself. If you are really stuck on a question, write down what you know and what you remember being significant or related to the topic. You may get partial credit for what you write, even if it is not structured like a perfect essay. Test results. When you get any kind of test back, make sure to look at your results. Examine which questions you tended to get right or wrong, and figure out which formats are most or not as difficult for you. Note professor comments. Ask yourself how much material came from the lecture notes or discussions in classes, and how much came from the text. Also examine which type of questions the professor prefers to use. Think about this information to better study and prepare for the next test. Talk with your professor if you have further questions. Professors are eager to help students because it gives them more time to go into details, clear up any confusion, and talk about personal experiences related to the topic. If you have any concerns about how they graded you, be sure to discuss this with them, as you may earn back points or receive more lenient grading on a later time. It also shows that you are interested in the information and care about your grade. For more information about study skills, or if you would like to talk to a study skills tutor, please visit, call, or email at the tutoring center.